Hi, my name is Joel A. Sutherland. I'm the author of the best-selling Haunted Canada series. And uh, this is another one of my most haunted videos where I share one of the scariest stories that I've covered in this series from every province and territory in the country. So today's stop is to Prince Edward Island. Uh, and the book I'm going to be telling a story from is Haunted Canada 9. So this story is called The Legend of the Ghost Pirate. That's right, it actually combines two of my all-time favorite things in life, ghosts and pirates. If I just give you a quick little side note here before I get started telling you some of the details from this story, uh, it's to say that when I was about eight years old, uh, my parents took me to Florida, to Disney World, and my two favorite rides by far were the Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. They still are to this day. And so when I started uh, researching this story and finding people's accounts of having seen uh, the ghost of the infamous pirate Captain Kidd, a real pirate who lived in the 1600s, on the shore of Prince Edward Island, I knew I needed to know more about this. I knew I needed to write about this. And uh, it was a fascinating story to research. I'm going to tell you um, one of the uh, claims that I came across. And it's actually set in the very early 1700s. Uh, it's all about uh, a man named Benton Woods who lived in Montague, PEI. And uh, one night he was out for a late night walk when he saw a pirate ship out on the water. There was actually another smaller ship coming back and forth from shore to the ship, from shore to the ship, and it was carrying a pirate crew led by Captain Kidd. And they were bringing uh, chests of treasure from the ship to the shore. When the pirate himself, the leader, got off the boat, Benton was a little terrified. He was a very imposing figure, Captain Kidd, so Benton hid behind a tree where he wasn't spotted. And he watched Captain Kidd in his flowing jacket, his big pirate hat, his body totally covered in pistols and swords. And as he commanded his crew to bury all of the treasure there on the beach. So they dug deep holes, they put the giant large chests into the holes, covered it all up, patted it down, had one last look around just to make sure nobody was nearby watching. And when they were convinced that they were alone, even though they weren't, they got back onto the pirate ship and sailed off. Now, naturally, Benton wanted the treasure for himself, but he knew that if he dug it up there and then, there was no way he'd be able to carry the treasure chests all the way back to his house. They looked far too heavy. So he returned home, and he hatched a plan. He decided that he'd build himself a ship, a small little boat that he would be able to sail late one night again back to the spot on the beach where he could dig up the treasure, drag it a shorter distance onto his boat, and head back home. He got to work, and as he did, word then eventually came from England that Captain Kidd had been caught and tried for one count of murder and five counts of piracy. And he was found guilty of these crimes, so he was hanged. Now, if anything, this just made Benton want to get the treasure even faster, so he sped up his work doubled his efforts, and soon his boat was ready. Late one night, he sailed back to the spot on the beach where he had seen the pirate crew and Captain Kidd bury the treasure, and he disembarked a little way down. Uh, he didn't want to get off his boat too close to that location, just in case anybody was around watching. As he got off his boat and started to approach the spot, he noticed somebody had beat him there. There was already somebody who had dug a big hole and it was actually empty. Now, this is probably my favorite part of the story. As Benton approached this mysterious figure, he realized it wasn't a living human or really anyone living at all. It was the ghost of Captain Kidd. Now, uh, Benton was terrified. He didn't know whether to run this way or that. But before he could flee, the ghost pirate said, So you come for me, treasure, and don't you deny it, for I can see the look of disappointment in your eyes, even from where I stand. Well, you're too late, you sniveling son of a landlubber. It's gone. And true enough, somebody had found the treasure before both Benton and the ghost of Captain Kidd. So the ghost pirate filled the hole back in with sand, patted it down, and disappeared right before Benton's eyes. However, his shovel did not disappear. It was left on the sand where he had dropped it. So Benton approached 
and picked up the shovel, took a look at it, and noticed the Jolly Roger etched into its surface. Now, the Jolly Roger is the uh, famous skull and crossbones pattern that you see in a lot of pirate uh, ship flags. And if you look really closely, you probably see it on my shirt as well. So, Benton didn't get the treasure, but he did at least get Captain Kidd's shovel. And for many years thereafter, he'd be found late at night in the pub, spinning the tall tale of him coming across the ghost of Captain Kidd. And if anyone didn't believe him, even one skeptic in the crowd, Benton would then pull out the shovel as proof that he had, in fact, come across Captain Kidd. It's a great story. It's a fun one. I got to admit, I'm a little jealous of Benton. If I ever have to come face to face with a ghost, I certainly hope it's a ghost as interesting and, uh, and fun as a ghost pirate like Captain Kidd. Uh, please join me again for another tale in the Most Haunted series, where again I'll be uh, telling you one of the scariest stories from every province and territory in Canada. Until then, I hope you're doing well. Take care.